This is from the Castilla County Wikipedia page. Under history. On July 8, 1694, Spanish conquistador Don Diego de Vargas and his army, and his army of 70 troops Two Franciscans two weeks before the Battle of Astil Alacqua reached Castilla County looking for the lands of the Ute people in order to get away from the Apaches in New Mexico. The purpose of Vargas's expedition was to find food for the 1,100 civilians living in Santa Fe. Diego Vargas is not the first Spaniard in Colorado. Juan de Archuleta led an expedition into Colorado in 1664. The expedition of Diego Vargas is the first, the first traceable Spanish expedition into Colorado. In 1647, Governor Luis Rosas fought with the Utes in northern New Mexico while Rosa came near Colorado. It's not been verified that he actually did so. Don Diego de Vargas and his army of men marched past Ute Mountain and up along where CO-159 is today to a bank on the Culebra River near present-day San Luis. And then westward towards present-day San Acasio where CO-142 is located. A historical marker is located where CO-142 crosses the Rio Grande River which is approximately where Vargas crossed it in 1694. Don Diego de Vargas, to get away from the native rebels around Taos, New Mexico, went to the land of the Utahs, i.e. the Utes. The Spanish viewed the Utes as very friendly allies, and so it was decided that the departure should be by way of the land of the Utahs, a nation which is very friendly towards the Spaniards. And who felt their loss, the Spanish. The Utes felt the Spaniards' loss and withdrawal at the time of the uprising in this kingdom, said Don Diego de Vargas. Wrote Don Diego de Vargas, July 6, 1694. Diego Vargas and his men left the valley around Taos on July 7, 1694. The camp was ready to leave at about 1 o'clock at night on Wednesday. The 7th, the present month of July of this year, and I, said Governor and Captain General, left said place and took the road leading to the land of the Utahs, taking Matthias Luxon as interpreter. Da, 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 Don Diego de Vargas, July 7th, 1694. On July 8th, 1694, Don Diego de Vargas reached Colorado via Castilla County. He made it. Don Diego de Vargas wrote that the Taos rebel natives ventured as far out as to where the, Apacho, the Apaches del Acho resided. The Apaches del Acho, which is the first recorded instance of that being documented. The Apaches del Acho, and they resided in the mountains on the Colorado Creek, which may be... The Castillo Creek. Diego Vargas wrote that he should flee from this. It was north of the Arroyo Hondo. Diego, uh, Don Diego de Vargas. Don Diego de Vargas wrote that he should flee from this place because the Utes and the Apaches were not friends, and therefore Don Diego de Vargas presumed the Apache wouldn't want the Spaniards or any of the friends of the Utes to be on their land. Diego Vargas wrote that the Taos rebel natives had sentinels and spies watching us and that he saw buffalo dung. And in order that the Utahs, whom we are seeking, may know of our arrival in the kingdom of New Mexico in the villa of Santa Fe, I ordered that large smoke signals be raised, and I marched on with the camp to the Culebra River, the Culebra River, that's, Santa, that's San Luis. It being nine long leagues distance, and all country of extended valleys and many arroyos with groves of trees. It's evident from the dung which was found at the buffalo pastures here, having reached the Culebra River at six o'clock in the evening, I pitched camp in order to spend the night 
with my men on its bank, Don Diego de Vargas, July 8th, 1694. July 9th, 1694, Vargas and the Spanish soldiers marched four leagues to the left, to the west, and reached the Rio del Norte, i.e. the Rio Grande River. Some of the men who were good swimmers entered in order to locate a ford. It was seen that it had none, and that the current was swift, which was very disappointing, for it would be necessary to use rafts to cross. After the entire camp had arrived, I, said governor and captain general, called a halt and started unloading. Don Diego de Vargas, July 9th. An unnamed Tiwa of the Pueblo San Juan owned by an Alcati, Lorenzo Madrid, led the Spanish cavalcade to a spot on the Rio Grande where they all could cross the river. The Tiwa then led Diego Vargas far into the interior of the lands of the Uta Nation. So an unnamed Tiwa, that's just like Squano, right? And then they went far into the interior of the lands of the Uta Nation and looking for a ford in the river... At a distance of slightly less than two leagues, it was discovered that two branches of the river emptied there, and falling along the meadow and islet of beautiful pasture land, at the bottom of a little mountain slope, the river was forded. Here it was very wide, and due to the emptying of the two branches, the current of the river was slowed up, and so even though it was deep, it was passable. The muleteers took the land across in two trips because of the necessity of carrying a tercio on each mule. What the hell is a tercio? It was successfully crossed. I spent that night on said meadow in Islet with the joy and assurance of having found said ford, which was the worry which generally oppressed the spirit of all. Don Diego de Vargas, July 9th, 1694. Diego Vargas crossed the Rio Grande out of Castilla County into Canales County on July 10th, 1694 with the Squadron of the Royal Banner. The setting up of brushwood, which was necessary on the embankments as well as the banks to assure the descent both at the entrance and departure of said river, was a very difficult task for the soldiers. There was no other way to cross because it was flanked by steep inclines, veritable walls. And so in this fashion, the obstacle was overcome and the crossing facilitated and made feasible Don Diego de Vargas, July 10th, 1694. After leaving Castilla County, Diego Vargas and his men marched four leagues to the San Antonio River, and at 3 o'clock in the afternoon set up camp. A league, a league is approximately 3.452 miles. The Spanish conquistadors had familiar, familiarity Familiar, familiar, they were familiar with the San Luis Valley region of Colorado prior to 1694, which is indicated by a Vargas map, which had listed the Culebra and San Antonio by name. September 4th, 1779, Governor Juan Bautista de Anza undertook a major military expedition to kill Chief Greenhorn of the Comanche. Anza and his troops marched up out of Spanish New Mexican territory through the San Luis Valley and then up and around to Colorado Springs, down through Pueblo, and then returned through the San Luis Valley. Instead of going the way he came, however, Governor Juan Bautista de Anza instead went through Castilla County, southbound, which was the same route that Don Diego de Vargas had used in 1694 going northbound. In late January 1807, 1807, Zebulon Montgomery Pike Pike walked through Costilla County and then built a fort in present-day Sanford, Canejos County.